This is Common Core State Standard Support video in mathematics. The standard is 4NBTB5. This standard reads, multiply a whole number of up to four digits by a one digit whole number and multiply two two digit numbers using strategies based on place value and the properties of operations. Illustrate and explain the calculation by using equations, rectangular arrays, and or area models. There are standards uh, that are related to this. So in, uh, back in third grade, we had standard 3NBTA3, which, which dealt with multiplying one-digit whole numbers by multiples of 10. So that was an initial exposure. Then in the same grade level, uh, we have a couple of related standards. Uh, for NBTA2, where students are to read and write multi-digit whole numbers using base 10 numerals, number names, and expanded form, and also compare those numbers. We also have standard 4NBTA3, where students use place value understanding to round multi-digit whole numbers. This standard that we're dealing with is very important because if we look ahead, it's really laying the foundation for standard 5NBTB5, where students are expected to fluently multiply multi-digit whole numbers using the standard algorithm. And it's also the foundation for standard 5NBTB7, where students will be adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing decimals up to the hundreds place. We also need to be concerned about uh, addressing the standards for mathematical practice. But if we use uh, the right strategies and activities in this standard, we can uh, cover these. Uh, reason abstractly and quantitatively. Construct viable arguments and critique the reasoning of others. Use appropriate tools strategically attend to precision, and look for and express regularity in repeated reasoning. Let's look at the first part of this standard where we multiply a whole number of up to four digits by a one digit whole number. So let's just jump straight to four digits. So let's say we have 3,723 times five. Most of us uh, were, went straight to the standard algorithm where we were taught, okay, five times three is 15, uh, and this is terrible terminology, uh, carry the one. Then we have five times two is 10, uh, plus that one is 11. So we write down the one and we <clears throat> carry the one. Then we have five times seven is 35, plus the one that's 36, we write down our six. And the infamous carry the three. Then we have five times three is 15, plus the three is 18. Now, in doing the standard algorithm, we lose sight of a lot of things, especially place value. Uh, it becomes a, a procedure where students really don't understand what in the world is going on. So it's important, uh, a key piece for this standard, that we need to use strategies based on place value and the properties of operations. Now, it, it could be done with the standard algorithm uh, but it's rare that, uh, I know I wasn't shown this, that you had 5 times 3 is 15, uh, and we wrote down our 5 because that was 5 ones, and then the other 10 ones, we actually composed them into 110. We converted the 10 ones to 110, and so that's what this one is. Uh, then we had 5 times 2, but that's really 5 times 2 tens, uh, which is 10 tens plus the 110 here that gave us 11 tens. Then we actually took those tens, tens, and, and made them 100, which is what this is. Uh, so again, uh, it could be done, but, uh, but it's better to you know, use those properties and use place value uh, prior to ever going to the standard algorithm. So let's take 3,723 and break it down by place value. And now we can do the multiplication by 5, but we're doing it uh, separately. So we took a 5 times 3 is 15, 5 times 20 is 100, and so forth. And then we combine them together to get our product of 18,615. Now, it might be a little tough horizontally to actually do the adding at the end. So a good idea would be to, well, let's do the same thing, except let's put our partial products vertically. 5 times 3 is 15, 5 times 20 is 100, 5 times 700 is 3,500, and 5 times 3,000 is 15,000. Then we can combine them to be 18,615. Okay, let's take 3,723 times 5. 
And what we're doing now is we're going to do exactly what we did before, but we're just going to do it with the understanding of place value without having 3,723 expanded out. So we have 5 times 3 is 15. We have 5 times 2, but that's really two tens. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, 5 times 2, that'd be 100. Uh, 5 times 7, it's not really 5 times 7, it's 5 times 700. And then we have 5 times 3, but that's not really 5 times 3, that's 5 times 3,000. Combine them all together to get our product. Now let's change it up a little bit. If we take uh, that same exact problem, let's do it horizontally. So what we need to do now is use our place value and change our representation of 3,723 uh, to show what we have uh, by place value. And we're multiplying everything by 5. We use our distributive property now. We multiply 5 again by each one of those. So it actually becomes four different multiplication problems. Then we get our partial products, except now they're horizontal instead of in a vertical format. Do our combinations and we get the same solution. We're focusing on place value and properties of operations, in particular the distributed property, a very important property that students need more experience with. Now we took sort of a shortcut in that example. What we were really doing, we also were using equations because the 3,723 times 5 is actually what would go on the left-hand side of the work that we did just a little while ago. Now this last statement that deals with illustrating and explaining the calculation by using equations, rectangular arrays, and area models. We have a little bit of a problem here because 3,723 can be thought of as 3,723 3, sets of five. So we would need 3,723 of these, uh, and that would be very tough to actually do physically. So there are some limitations to using uh, physical representations when we're dealing with such large numbers. So now let's look at multiplying two two-digit numbers. Now let's say we're multiplying 54 times 36. So going back to the standard algorithm, uh, 6 times 4 is 24. We bring down our 4 and <clears throat> the infamous carry the 2. 6 times 5 is 30 plus 2 is 32. And then we have uh, multiplication by the 3. 3 times 4 is 12. There's our 1. And then 3 times 5 is 15 plus the 1 is 16. Then we combine it to be 1,944. Now, of course, this raises a lot of issues, a lot of questions with students. They're wondering, well, why did this happen? Why did we shift this one place to the left and so forth? So again, it's a procedure that can be very confusing uh, with little understanding of, of the foundation as to why these things happen. So let's backtrack and uh, let's uh, make sure that we use uh, strategies uh, based on place value and our properties of operations. So just like we did with the four digit by one digit multiplication, we're going to break this up by place value as to what it really means, 50 plus 4 times 30 plus 6. So now if you do our multiplications, we have 6 times 4 is 24, 6 times 50 is 300. Now we multiply 30 times 4 is 120. And 30 times 50 would be 1,500. Combine them together to get our final product of 1944. Now, if we compare what we just did to the standard algorithm, notice uh, there's our 24 and our, and our 300. There's the 324. And here's where uh, you really can see what, what happened. The 120 plus the 1,500, that's 1,620. So what happens here when we shift it to the left, obviously, is that this is really a zero. Okay, let's look at 54 times 36 again. And just like before, let's do this horizontally. We'll uh, change our 54 times 36 to what it uh, means uh, by place value. We break them up to 50 plus 4 times 30 plus 6. Then we're going to... Uh, do 
horizontally what we already did vertically. We need to multiply 50 times 30. And we need to multiply 50 times the 6. So we're done with the 50. Now we have to multiply by the 4, 4 times 30, and also 4 times 6. Then it's just a matter of doing our multiplications and get our partial products, combine them all together to get our same uh, solution of 1,944. Again, we didn't do anything that different. We just did it in a, in a horizontal format instead of a vertical format. And it's important that students get this kind of experience also because uh, later on uh, in algebra, they'll be doing this type of multiplication with the distributed property. The only difference will be that they'll be using variables, uh, not just numbers. So let's look at what happens here. Let's make some connections. If we go back and compare uh, what we did horizontally and vertically, notice that it's a, the exact same stuff. Uh, again, the only difference is how it's laid out. You know, there's our 24, there's our 120, there's our 300, and there's our 1500. Again, no difference in the actual process, just in the looks. So we can slowly, gradually build up to the standard algorithm. Uh, we could start this way by having our uh, numbers actually expressed using place value then that can lead to uh, the exact same process, except now uh, students are using their understanding of what these digits really represent. And then that uh, connects over and lays the foundation for the standard algorithm. And again, making the connections, there's our 324, and there's our 1620. Okay, now let's look at the last statement where we're supposed to illustrate and explain uh, using uh, rectangular arrays and area models. 54 times 36. Okay, so we have 36. So what we're really doing here is we're interpreting this as 54 sets of 36. So if we put them together, we got 54 sets of 36, so we, again, we need 54 of them, which would be difficult, but uh, depending on what materials you have to work with, it is feasible. Uh, so here we have 54 sets of 36. We can also uh, think more along the lines of a rectangular array, where we have our 36 like so, and we need 54 of them. So we don't lose count. Uh, here's our uh, rectangular arrays of 36. So there was 10 of them. Here's another 10, another 10, another 10, then and one more. So we got uh, 50 of them so far. We need four more. Okay. So there's our 54 sets of 36 using rectangular arrays. Now simply by scrunching these together, now we have a uh, rectangle that's 54 by 36. So now this becomes an area model. But keep in mind that we're really dealing with the area, which is all the space that's inside of the rectangle. So again, uh, if we look at this strictly from an area model perspective, it, it would be, for example, a 54 by 36 rectangle. And mark off our units, fill it in. So here's our physical model uh, of 54 by 36. It'd be kind of tough to count all your squares this way. Uh, one possibility would be to go ahead and split it up. For example, here, these are blocks of 100. Uh, these are uh, uh, different size blocks because, again, uh, this is 6. So you have uh, 6 by 10 right here and so forth. And then over here you have... Uh, four sets of 10. But again, uh, students can take these and add them all up to get the final solution. You know, a little tougher uh, as opposed to just 
multiply 54 times 36. Now, you have to really be aware of the resulting units when you multiply. Here's what I mean. Okay, if this was an area model, you multiply 23 times 15, the result is 345 square units. You know, these little one by one squares. Now, if we're dealing with rectangular arrays, we would have 23 sets of 15, so we have 23 of these rectangular arrays of 15 each. But the result is not 345 square units, it's just 345 of these little blocks. So we have 345 of these little individual blocks. Now, when we use little squares or whatever in our rectangular arrays, it does get kind of confusing because it's real easy to kind of cross over the line and think of it as area instead. So one thing we can do is kind of transition to where what we're using in the rectangular arrays doesn't look like little squares. So here it's a little bit more obvious. I've got 23 sets of 15. And so now it's easier to see that the result is 345 of these objects. So this standard is very important. It lays the foundation for the standard algorithm for multiplication. But it does it in such a way where we use strategies based on place value and, and we use the properties of operations so that students understand what really happens in that whole multiplication process.